You can easily transform the look and health of your houseplants with these 10 genius hacks that will blow your mind. Not only will your plants love these hacks, they also make your life as a plant parent much easier too, as well as saving you a few bucks in the process. I don't know about you, but I really struggle to find decent watering cans suitable for indoor plants that are big enough to water more than a couple of plants at a time. The largest I can usually find is a 1.5 litre can this will probably water five plants at the most. There is a thrifty alternative, which is recycling the large cartons of milk you buy from the store once you've used all the milk. Instead of throwing them out, you can repurpose these jugs as large free watering cans in a few simple steps. And the beauty of these is that you can even decorate them to your liking. Great if you want to put your kids' hands and minds to work. Give the carton a good wash with soapy water to get rid of all the milk, as well as that milky smell. You don't want that lingering around. At this point, you can, of course, just fill up the jug with water and go on your merry way. But to create a steady stream of water that doesn't go all over your carpet, I like to make a little hole in the lid. Place the lid onto a wooden board Use a hammer and nail to make a hole in it. The bigger the hole, the bigger the stream of water. And to enable the flow of water, Create a small opening in the handle of the bottle that then allows the air to enter. Now grab your kids and let them decorate the outside of the pot to their liking. You've just made your own unique watering can. I've lost count of the number of times I've been stabbed in the hands by cactus spikes when repotting or even handling them. It's so frustrating and it just seems like an inevitability whenever I go near my cactus. Well that is until now because I've got a neat little solution to save your hands. Grab your kitchen tongs and use them to handle the cactus rather than relying on a towel or some of those awkward thick gloves that make it so difficult to do anything. It really is so easy to pick up the cactus and move it to and from the soil without getting pricked constantly. I recommend using silicon tongs instead of those metal ones because they'll be a little kinder to your cactus. You're welcome. Long time viewers of the channel will know just how much of a thing I've got for bottom watering. It's one of my favorite things to talk about in my videos that and moisture meters, if you know, you know. I much prefer it to top watering because it provides an even distribution of water to the soil and encourages the roots to grow downwards towards the moisture rather than at the top where the crown of the plant is. The one disadvantage of this approach though is that very often our plants are sat in tiny little saucers. This means it can take a few waterings to get enough moisture into the soil. It can take some time. The solution to this is to buy yourself a large gardening tray, just like the one I have. I bought this from my local garden centre and I absolutely love it because I can grab a large selection of my plants, put them inside and then fill the tray with water. It's plenty deep enough for all the plants to get a good drink within 15 to 20 minutes. Once you're done, pop the plants back in their homes and do the next batch. A mistake I bet lots of you are making when taking cuttings from your plant is not watering the plant prior to taking the cuttings. Watering it before taking cuttings is important as it helps to ensure that it's adequately hydrated, which can improve the chances of successful rooting of the cuttings. When a plant is well hydrated, there's a better chance of withstanding the stress of having cuttings taken from it. Cuttings are essentially clones of the parent plant and they rely on stored reserves of water and nutrients in the stem to establish new roots and support new growth. If the parent plant is dehydrated, it may not have sufficient resources to support the cutting, which can lead to their failure to root and establish. Also, watering the plant before taking cuttings can help reduce stress on the plant, which can improve its overall health and vigor. A hydrated plant is less likely to experience wilting, leaf drop, or other signs of stress, which can make it more resilient better able to recover from the shock of having cuttings taken from it. All you need to do is give the plant a good drink the day before propagation day. We all know the importance of light for happy houseplants. Keep them in the dark and we soon have a mutiny on our hands where they down tools and refuse to look beautiful. Not all of us have the luxury of living in subtropical climates where the light is bright for most of the year. Most of us have long winters where we see little of the sky for three months and some of us even see little of the sky during the summer. This means we need to maximize the light we have available to us as much as possible. I've talked about grow lights on the channel before, but there is another nifty little hack you can do to give them that extra little light they crave. Simply hang up a large mirror in your room and place your most light loving plants there. When plants are placed in front of a mirror, the mirror reflects the light back onto the plant, providing additional light for growth. This can be especially helpful in areas with limited natural light, 
such as a room with small windows or one that faces north. It also has the added bonus of enhancing the visual appeal. Plants can look even more beautiful and vibrant when placed in front of a mirror, as the reflection can create the illusion of a larger and fuller plant. And this can be especially effective for smaller plants, or for plants that are placed in smaller spaces. I've got a large mirror in my west-facing living room above my fireplace mantel, and I've got a selection of plants in front of it. This isn't the brightest spot. It's about two meters from the window, and it kind of faces northwest. I definitely think having this mirror here helps add a little boost of light to help these plants, because they're very happy and regularly push out new growth. If you've got a garden or balcony and keep plants in terracotta pots, then you'll no doubt have broken a few in your time. They're not the most robust of things, and it seems they easily break from the cold weather during winter. If you throw them in the trash when they break, then stop, you can be putting them to much better use. Add them to the bottom of your plant pot as a barrier to stop soil coming out of the drainage hole whenever you water your plant. I find this is the most reliable way to stop dirt coming out of the hole but at the same time allowing water to flow through easily. Using things like coffee filters can work fine, but the flow of water is much slower. With broken terracotta, it runs out much quicker and there is no risk of the roots sitting in standing water. If you don't have terracotta, then no problem. The next time you break a mug or something else made of porcelain, keep the bits and use it for this purpose. Having plant roots standing in water should be an enthusiast's worst nightmare. It creates a wet environment for root rot to take hold and destroy your beloved plant. A problem that often happens when we top water our plants is that we water the plant thoroughly and then add it straight back to the pot without letting the water drain through properly. And I get it, we lead busy lives and don't want to spend hours making sure every drop has run through the soil but it is important to make sure most of it has. Otherwise, the plant could be left to sit in a puddle in its decorative pot. A cheeky little solution then is to create a DIY raised platform in the decorative pot so that the plant sits above any potential puddle of water. And you see these pots in the store all the time. They have a raised center for this very purpose. The problem is though, is that they're often quite ugly. So why not make your own version? I like to use an upended saucer to create the raised platform in the pot. This is just enough to stop the plant sitting in water when it continues to flow out of the soil after watering. Do you struggle to find a space in your home to fit a brand new plant you have just brought from the store? I certainly did a long time ago, and much to my wife's displeasure, I continue to find nifty solutions for displaying more and more plants. And a great solution to this is the relatively cheap stalls you can purchase from good old Ikea. They are super light, can be stacked, and are super handy to be able to dot around the house and place a plant or two on top of. I've got two in my living room, one with a large Calafair elder grass, and the other with a Alocasia elephant ear, and the one in my bedroom with a Monstera adansonia sitting on top. And I just love how flexible these are. I used to keep my Calafair elder grass in front of the living room window on one of these units, and I found they were suffering from too much afternoon sun with some browning on the leaves. I moved it to the back of the room as a trial and it's much happier. This is the thing I found most useful. If a plant is not happy, you can easily try it in another position without having to move lots of things around. For 10 more awesome plant hacks, including using a lint roller to detect tiny critters on your plant's foliage, check out the video here by clicking on the link.